Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Anne and you are watching Kile Mink. And today I'd like to talk about whether we should sell our art, whether we should give away our art on websites like Unsplash or Pexels or things like that, whether we should publish our writing, our music, our poetry, our photography, how do you decide when to make your work that public? How do you decide what to hold back? And I know that the answer to this is not simple, and it's going to be different for everyone. This is simply what I have been thinking lately, what I have been grappling with, some conclusions that I have come to. But I would really like to encourage a greater discussion of this, so please, in the comments section, tell us, why do you make art? Is art your Prozac? Is art your Vicodin? Is art your connection to a friend or a family member? Does art give you energy? Is it your method of memory keeping? What drives you to make art? And then what do you do with it? Do you keep it on your bookshelf? Do you sell it? Do you give it away? So here's what I've been thinking about this. I got to this discussion point in my head because of this picture. I took this picture of a peony in a garden down the street. We have a lovely homeowner several houses down who just loves making their garden public. So out in the curb lawn, they have just these gorgeous perennials. And this lovely peony was out there and I took this picture of it and I've been taking pictures a very long time. We didn't have smartphones when I was a toddler, but we had little brownie cameras and Polaroids. I have had a camera in my hand since I could walk. And after all that time, this still remains one of my absolute favorite pictures. I just took it this summer. And every time I look at it, I think, gosh, this should be blown up. It should be huge. It should be a fine art print. It should be on people's walls. I should sell it maybe for a lot of money. But it's in here. It's in my journal. This is a Loistrom 1917. It's my Omni book, my commonplace book, my journal, my diary. And sometimes I just print pictures instead of painting or drawing or lettering. Every time I open to this picture, I think, I should sell that. So then I was at Michael's and I saw this cute little frame. And it's really cute from the front, isn't it? It's simple gold. It actually comes with a mat. The opening is two by three. And I like to make tiny little prints. And I also like to paint tiny little things. I like little illustrations. So I thought, well, I could get a bunch of these. And I could start an Etsy shop again. And I could sell these little mini pieces of my art. And then I flipped it over. And honestly, it's not very good quality. And I wondered how long it would hold up. And there were eight on the shelf. And six of them had you know, manufacturing defects and blemishes. And I thought, well, I don't want to put my name on those. There were only two that were good enough to buy. So I went home and I started looking for wholesale gold frames that were just right. And thinking of those details and supply chain issues and shipping and trying to keep up five-star reviews on Etsy and doing everything in your power to make the customer happy, it just kind of frustrated me. <laughs> and, and it was overwhelming. And I thought, you know what? Maybe, maybe I won't do that today. Here's what I wrote. I said, lately, needing more income, I've been contemplating how to sell photo prints, license images, digitize paintings, etc. And every time I get to the point of figuring out the details, my brain shuts down and I'm overcome with anxiety. I love art. I do not love inviting other people to own my art. One of my favorite things about photography is the moment that I open up a negative of a particularly striking shot and I make a couple of tweaks and I see the art for the very first time. It's mine. I am the only person on earth who has ever seen this and I'm immensely proud that I created it. There are few better feelings. As soon as I share the piece though, whether it's a painting or a photograph or a poem or a song lyric or a short story, I lose something in the process. I'm deflated. The work no longer belongs to me. Every viewer now has the ability to assign their own judgment and meaning and worth to the art. 
and I begin nitpicking and I see flaws I hadn't noticed before and I consider taking it down. No amount of Facebook likes or Instagram comments can ever equal the way that I feel about my work when it's still very privately mine and mine alone. And to this point, the meager income that I've earned from my art isn't enough to make up for the sense of loss I feel when a piece is no longer mine. I hate losing control over how it will be used. I can't imagine putting everything I've made in the hands of people who will not be good stewards. The dopamine hits offered by social media though, those dopamine hits trick us into feeling an urge to share, to share our photographs, to share our reactions, share our new purchases, share our perceived wrongs, and share our victories. And yet every single time we hit that button to publish pieces of our soul, we are giving something away. We're establishing a false intimacy with people we barely know or who in many cases are complete strangers. William Butler Yeats wrote, I have spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly because you tread on my dreams. Aren't we doing the same thing with each post we make? Aren't artists spreading pieces of themselves on smartphones the world over and humbly asking a toxic society to tread softly on our art? At what price point does that feeling of vulnerability transform into a positive energy? So if I earn $500 per month, will this unease subside? What if it's $1,000 a month? What if it's $10,000 a month? I've heard Johnny Depp say that he can't bear to watch his own films. He can't stand to see himself on screen because then he'll scrutinize every aspect of his performance and lose the confidence to ever make another movie. And I'm finding, especially as I get older, that then and as technology changes, as people can just screenshot anything they want and use it however they want, I'm finding that my art and my photography and my writing are all like what Johnny Depp is saying. I derive enormous joy in the making of the art, not in the sharing or the selling of it. So by definition, I suppose that makes me a hobbyist. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with just enjoying my own work on my own bookshelves for now. But I need some kind of a mantra to remind myself that I owe no one the right to my profound work. Because the urge to share and to profit, it can sometimes be overwhelming. Those algorithms are powerful. We like likes, don't we? So here's what I'm going to tell myself and what I'm going to give you permission to tell yourself. My art does not need to be a side hustle. My art does not need to become a commodity. My art does not need to belong to anyone but me. It's enough to make art for the joy of it, for the challenge of it, and for the therapeutic nature of it. You have permission to spend hours and hours on your hobbies, honing your skills without earning a dime. Art has invaluable worth beyond likes and downloads. It's an anti-drug for many people. It's a mode of expression which helps keep you from bottling up all those toxic feelings. And it can be a real motivator. Photography is often what gets me out hiking or exploring a new little town. I relish the challenge of chasing light and color and nature and marrying them in a frame. And I adore flipping back through my albums and retracing my steps and visiting places all over again through my images. And now I'm giving them new life. I really like painting from the photographs that I've taken over the years. And I can savor all of that without making my work public or selling it. I can enjoy the purity without muddying up the whole experience with stress. So I'm going to say this very clearly. Let the making of art be thy medicine.
Let the making of art be your medicine. That's for me. I wrote this for me. If you get something out of it, I really hope you do. Please enjoy it. Please listen to it over and over. Please write down those mantras in your own journal. My art does not need to be a side hustle. My art does not need to become a commodity. My art does not need to belong to anyone but me. And I have permission to spend hours and hours on my hobbies, honing my skills without earning a dime. But, there's always a but there. But, I understand the economy that we're in. I understand the challenges a lot of us are facing. And I understand that a lot of us have talents which can be used to derive income. So if you are in a situation where you need to sell some paintings to keep the lights on, please, by all means, do it. And if you are the kind of person, I don't, maybe it's an extroverted personality that I don't have. If you are the kind of person who can put all your work out there and you love attending to the details of a business and you have fun running your Etsy shop, keep doing it. I'm not suggesting you shouldn't. But I think that some of the things I've mentioned here are probably things that other people are feeling as well. And I just want to remind you that as you watch all the videos on YouTube about how to monetize your artwork, and as you see all the Instagrams with people sharing and sharing and sharing every single thing they paint, you can use them as inspiration without feeling like you have to put your work out there too. If you're the kind of person who likes curling up by the fireplace, and just looking back through your own albums and deriving immense joy from that, that's enough. Art has invaluable worth beyond the likes and downloads. It's enough to make art for the joy of it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please join us in the comments section. Talk about why you make art and why you've chosen to sell it or not sell it. Share it, not share it and enjoy making art. Enjoy that journey wherever it takes you. Thank you. Bye-bye.